Good morning. Make sure everybody gets in from the reception room here to listen to the announcements. All right, so good morning and welcome to worship this morning. My name is Dan Hay, and I'm delighted that you are with us in person or watching from home. Let's wave to everybody at home up in the camera there. <laughs> if you are visiting today and have any questions, please look for Gail, or Deacon Gail Barton. And where's Gail? Is Gail? There's Gail back there. Okay. Yes, she'll uh, be available to answer any questions you have about our church. Um, please be sure to sign in and pass along in your row the maroon colored friendship pads located in the seat back in front of you, and then try to pass them back down to where they were. People can see who's in, in your row. <clears throat> uh, the offering is one way of many ways for us to respond to God. Monetar monetary gifts to support the ministry of Orchard Park Presbyterian are greatly appreciated, and secure online giving is also available. You can now scan the QR code available in the bulletin or text to our Give Plus text number, also available in the bulletin. The flowers on the communion table are given by Ginny Sprague. Thank you, Ginny. Uh, Presbyterian Women's Fall Program is October 5th, so please see Sue Sager after worship to sign up. There's a table out there. That you'll be sitting at. So, 
Uh, one quick thing about uh, adult education. We had like 15 people in there today, and it's, it's a really great topic. So um, talking about how, how people think and what makes them think that way and how it relates to the political season that we have coming up. So um, powerful tools for caregivers will start a six-week online program on October 10th. And probably all of us will be caregivers at one point or another, so um, information is in the bulletin. Also, thanks to everyone who brought in sandwiches for St. Luke's. Um, we, we had 166 plus decorated cookies. Um, next week is Sandwich Sunday, or the, sorry, the next Sandwich Sunday will be October 20th. <clears throat> also want to thank the 50 people that showed up Thursday night for our dinner and discussion uh, about the, with the weatherman, uh, Bob Hamilton, uh, went really well. Uh, our next um, dinner and discussion will be October 10th, Thursday, and will feature Doug Yeomans, uh, one of the best guitarists and folk singers uh, in Western New York. So uh, you can sign up for that at the Welcome Center as well. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, there are many other things happening here at OPPC. Please check the bulletin for all the details. And here is Will Weiss to talk about the insert. Oh, one other thing too is the Bible study every Tuesday night. Yes, Tuesday night as well. Um, please join in, uh, Pastor Hughes will be leading that Tuesday nights at seven, I think it is. Yeah. So anyway, Will Weiss, where's Will? There's, there's Will. Good morning, everyone. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, my name is Will Weiss. I am the chair of the worship committee here at OPPC. Inside of your bulletin, you will find an insert. It looks like this. It's empty, though. Mine is filled out. Um, if you all could fill out the insert, it's asking for what your favorite hymns are, your five favorite hymns. If you could write down what your favorite hymns are, pass in the insert to the collection plate, or there will also be a basket on the treat table out uh, in the reception room. We would love to know what hymns you would love to sing or hear during service. We would love to know that. So this is a great way for us to gauge that with you. Uh, so just like I said, you can pass it in on to the collection plate, or you can turn it into the basket out in the reception room. We will be doing this next week as well. Thank you. If you have any questions about this at all, do not hesitate to find me after service in the reception room. I promise I won't bite too hard. Thank you. And can you please rise for the call to worship? We gather in the name of the living Christ to worship God. Surely God is in this place and calls us to worship in service and in truth. God's love is for you and for all people everywhere that we may share God's love we may be renewed in the refreshing. The living Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. And join us in number hymn number two.
While we may learn or yearn to be like Jesus, we know that in our hot-headed choices, our frantic lives, our impetuous words, we often fall short. But we can always confess and speak of our need for Christ's saving presence in our lives. Gracious God, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging that we have not always worshipped you in spirit and in truth. We confess that our worship has sometimes been insincere and distracted. Forgive us for the times we have failed to honor you and for allowing our hearts to stray from genuine devotion. Cleanse us, Lord, and renew our spirits. Help us to worship you with authenticity, hope, and kindness, reflecting your truth in all that we do. Guide us back to a place of true reverence and adoration for you. ...of forgiveness is this. Hear the good news. Whatever we confess in truth, God hears and understands. By God's love, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Having been reconciled in Jesus Christ, let us now share signs of that reconciliation with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Come on, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Back up. Back up. Back up. Yeah, sit down there. Sit down. Oh, gotta love this when the when the bigs join the littles on the rug for children's time. Way to go. Way to go, the four of you. So we looked at the banners last week, and what did we see? What did we notice in, that was on every single banner? What? There is a dove. Okay, so we saw the dove over there, and we saw the dove over here. And so over there, the dove's wings are spread in flight, right, to be that friend and comforter that Jesus promised. And then over there, the dove's wings are kind of like protective mode, right? Sheltering the people of God. We have a lot of siblings up here, folks. <laughs> it's a wild ride sometimes. Okay, so now we're going to look over Pastor's shoulder, and you see that, that dove up there? What else do you notice on that banner with the dove? It, that is one way of looking at it. There's three little drops of water, and that represents baptism. And then what is the water near? What is the water on? What is that thing that it's on? It looks like a it looks like a cup. And what might the cup be? When do we see the cup on the table? When we do communion, will you see the cup? Very nice. And then there are hands raised. When well, we don't do that here. <laughs> no, we don't. But in some churches, you raise your hands because you're reaching for the spirit of the living God. Mm -hmm. And so hands raised, that's the people praising God. What else is up there, Pastor? I can't see. Is there anything under the hands? 
nothing under the hand. Okay. Got it. The dove, so the chalice and the, the hand. So the so the chalice or the cup for communion and the drops of water for the baptism. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus was baptized, what came out of the sky? The, the dove. dove. So right. see, the dove is also representative of baptism. So those are things we do, including the praise the Lord that we don't. <laughs> we kind of like sway a little bit side to side. On a good day. On a good day. Are all parts of worship, okay? And today's great end of the earth, or of the earth, great end of the church. <laughs> I have a friend who keeps saying, you're talking about the, the great earth. ends of the, the earth. earth, and right. I said, well, it feels like we should, but no, it's the great the ends church. of the church. <laughs> and today, number three, is the maintenance of divine worship. So if you maintain your hair, if you maintain your car, if you maintain a clean house, what are you doing? Maintaining Maintain. your hair cleaning your house, maintaining your house, you're taking care. So when we take care to keep worship as very central to what the church does, we are maintaining divine worship. And divine worship, divine means, you know, worship to God. That's divine worship. So it's important that we remember to do those things. So that banner is a reminder of that. And now since the four joined me, if I hand you the microphone, can you each quickly think of what you did yesterday and tell the people and let the little people hear what you did? Well, then the three of you? Okay. All right, here you go. He's ready. Uh, so yesterday we went to a beach and started cleaning out the trash from the beach, and it was really disgusting because there was so much <laughs> trash. Um, but we kind of just, like, helped out the environment yesterday. Um, we saved, like, some of the fish because if that trash goes into the, the lake, then it can hurt the fish and the other animals that live there. It was really, like, nasty because, like, you could just, like, wait on the side of the beach and, like, trash would wash up with the water on the beach. So there was a lot of trash and so we picked up a lot of it. Do any of you remember what that was called? The Great Lakes, the, the Great Lakes Beach Sweep. Beach and sweep. all across the world, the third Saturday of September, waterways are cleaned up. And so when you all get a little bit older, you can join the older kids and you get a trash bag and gloves and you pick up junk off the beach so that the following summer when you go with your family, it's cleaner. Clean water is good for fish and birds and people alike. So thank you for your service, young'uns. And so now, back to divine worship that usually begins and ends with prayer. Prayer. Let's put our hands together. Hey, Joy. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. God, we thank you for Sunday mornings where we get to sit up front and we get to sing our songs, and sometimes we sway, and sometimes we clap, and sometimes we sing loud, and sometimes we sing soft, but it's all worship. But it's not all worship. God, help us to remember that worship is not just on Sunday morning, but it's also in what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth on Sunday and every day after. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. time for our scripture lesson. Um, it's on page 95 in your pew Bibles. I'm going to give you plenty of time to open up your pew Bible and check out page 95. It's John 4 verses 23 to 24. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. 
God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Our second scripture reading comes uh, from the <clears throat> book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Paul says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, on the basis of God's mercy to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable act of worship. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we are at our third installment of the six great ends of the church. And today we are focus, focusing on divine worship. So we're going to talk about worship a little bit today. And as, I'll, and as I usually do, I'll start with a story. Well, it's sort of a story, but just listen. When I was an undergrad, I took a class entitled Psychology of Religion, and it explored a broad range of religious experiences across the world and how they impacted the faithful. And throughout the course, we pondered how people experience worship and why certain forms of worship worked for some people and not for others. The most famous example that we discussed was the cultural differences found within Christianity in America. Now, I'm an African-American, and I went to an African-American undergrad school. So in our psychology of religion class, we talked about the differences between African-American churches and white churches. In the African-American tradition, worship services are lively. We sing loud. We clap our hands. We shout affirmations, right? Sometimes we dance, and sometimes we shake and tremble with ecstasy. African-American scholar W.E.B. Du Bois wrote in his seminal work, The Souls of Black Folk, he wrote that worship in our tradition serves as a catharsis. A catharsis is an extreme, an extreme change in emotion occurring as the result of experiencing strong feelings such as sorrow, fear, pity, or even laughter. For many Africans in the diaspora, worship provides a space for emotional purification or purging and gives us a means of making sense of our everyday experiences. On the other hand, we have, for instance, Orchard Park, 
Presbyterian church, where worship is a bit different. We only clap when the musician is done playing, and if it's good. <laughs> we only sing when we know the tune, and even then, we tend to hide our voice for fear of singing it wrong. Nobody wants to be wrong, right? So most times we won't even sing. We typically don't shout affirmations, although lately I've got a few amens in my sermons, which is good. That means I'm, I'm, I'm breaking y'all in. I'm slowly breaking you in, right? Amen. There we go. But one thing we don't do at Orchard Park Presbyterian Church is we absolutely do not dance. We don't dance at OPPC. And yet, we believe in the same God. But we worship God in different ways. The big question that we're talking about today, the big question that we asked in the class was, is there a right way to worship? The Apostle Paul tells us that the right way or in some translations, he says the, 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 the true and proper way to worship is to offer ourselves to God, offer ourselves to God as living sacrifices. Now, there is so much to unpack in that statement, and I'm not even going to try. Suffice it to say that what Paul was really getting at is that true worship has more to do with how we live our lives day to day than how we behave on Sunday morning. And Christ hinted at that uh, when he explained to the woman at the well about God, about worshiping God in spirit and in truth, right? So, because too often we associate worship with our weekly Sunday rituals of hymn singing and, and confessing our sins and, and, and passing the peace, right? We, we associate worship with those things that we do on Sunday to the point where our worship becomes severely regulated, right? Regulated by time and by order, right? Heaven forbid this worship service go beyond 60 minutes. Folk be in their feelings. Pastor, God. And I know some people watching the clock right now to make sure I don't go too long, right? These are the things that, that, that we associate with worship. The organ must be played. The organ must be played. My hymn must be played. Why did you play my hymn? It's mine. It's my favorite hymn. Why don't they play my hymn? These are the kinds of things. This is the box in which we put our worship. Question is, what about the Spirit? Where is the Spirit of God? Where is the Holy Spirit when it comes to our worship? I mean, Christ tells us that God is spirit, right? And, and so that we must worship God in spirit because God is spirit. So the only way for us to really worship God is if we do it in spirit. But again, what does that look like? Just because we aren't clapping and shouting and dancing, does that mean there's no spirit? Worship, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, is supposed to be communal as it connects us to the wider community of faith, right? It's supposed to be communal. It's supposed to bring us together. A lot of times people call it corporate worship because we were all in here together under one roof at the same time, right? And this kind, this aspect of worship builds the community. But worship also as it connects us to each other, worship also connects us to God, our source. And so, in theory, in practice, if all of those things are happening, right, if we're connecting in the faith, if we're connecting with God, in spirit and in truth, then the Holy Spirit is in the building. Okay? So, don't worry, I'm not going to make you dance. I'm not going to make... No, he's like, oh, I'll, I'll keep working. We'll, we'll keep working. That's a, that's a struggle for another day, right? If I can just get an amen, I'd be all right. We'll, we'll stick with amen for now, right? Before we move on into dancing or maybe clapping hands. 
as long as we are doing those things, then we are in spirit. We are worshiping in spirit. But I want to remind us of our commitment to the Matthew 25 initiative. Remember that Matthew 25 initiative, one of the aspects of that initiative was building vital, uh, building a vital congregation, building congregational vitality. And I have to say, and I can say this with all honesty, that I believe our church could use a bit more energy in our worship service. Amen. Just a little bit more energy, right? And maybe some more diversity, amen? Because it can make us a lot more attractive to new and younger members with young families, right? It makes us more appealing, more attractive because our worship is, worship can be a little bit more energetic, what they call dynamic. A dynamic worship service is a worship service that, that, that has an arc, like any good movie or any good song. It has an arc. It starts low, but then it builds and it takes you and, and you journey to a place and you reach the pinnacle, which could be the sermon or it could be the song. It could be anything. And then you come down. That's called a dynamic worship service. People like those things. They like it when a worship service takes them somewhere. Amen. A crescendo. They love it. We can do that here. It's not hard. And we can do it without sacrificing our hymns and our organ playing. We can do it. I believe that we can do it. We should try. But the truth is, siblings in Christ, all of that is meaningless without the Holy Spirit. Doesn't matter how good our music is. Doesn't matter how good the organ sounds or the piano. Doesn't matter how much we smile. It doesn't matter if we don't have the Holy Spirit. And so keeping with what Christ is telling us and what Paul is telling us, our task is not just to enliven our worship service, but to also better invoke the spirit of the living God into everything we do. That is true worship. So that, that, doesn't, that doesn't limit us to just Sunday morning. That means whatever we do, when we wake up in the morning, we should be praising and worshiping God. When we, when we go to work, we should be worshiping and praising God how we interact with each other, how we interact with our neighbors and how we interact with strangers. That is also worship, according to Paul and Jesus Christ. And so for us then to be more in spirit, that means we ourselves must endeavor to be more spiritual within ourselves. If God is spirit, and we wish to connect more fully with God, then we have to dig deeper into our own spirits. Something that stirs us. Something that elicits an emotion. And I know as Presbyterians, the frozen chosen, we try to limit any kind of emotional outbursts. Any, any, we, we try to limit and curtail any kind of emotional releases. And at some point, we have to step away from that. We have to embrace our feelings. The elephant, Dave. Sometimes we have to let the elephant go, right? Let the elephant run all around the room. But we're not there yet. But we're getting there. <laughs> Dave, uh, he, he really preached a good, uh, not preached, but he really taught a good course today. And it all links together. It all links together. Because... The Spirit of God is in us. Oh, that's what we say, right? We talk about how the Spirit of God is in us and that a peace of God, the essence of God is in us. Well, then when we worship, we should be tapping into that peace that is within us. When we worship, we should be digging deep into that part of us that is also with God. And that's how we make our connection. And if our worship isn't doing that, then we have work to do. Worship should be transformational, meaning we should be different as we leave than when we came in. And the only way for us to elicit such a transformation is if we are willing to peel back some layers. If we are willing to, to loosen up, y'all. Like right now, can, can y'all smile? <laughs> can I see some smiles on some faces? Like some of y'all looking at me. And I don't know, did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? 
Are you happy to be here? Amen. Listen, I'm a, let, let me, listen, I come from the black church. In the black church, we like to say, there are people who didn't make it to church this morning. They didn't make it out of bed this morning. But you did. And because you did, you ought to be grateful and happy that God allowed you to see another day. And that should make you happy. And that should make you smile. And that should make you joyous. And that should make you clap your hands. It should make you stomp your feet. It should make you dance because you are lucky. You made it this morning. And sometimes that's all it takes to be spirit-filled is just to say, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to have another day. Amen? In spirit and in truth. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, we don't know how you move, but we know that you move. Just as sure as we know that the wind blows, but we don't know where, we can't see it, we can feel it. And so, God, we acknowledge your presence in this place. Though we can't see it, I pray that we can feel it. We can feel your spirit, Lord. That means that you are in this place, and it means that we are connected. And so that means our worship was not in vain. And so, God, I say thank you. We say thank you. Thank you for dwelling with us for a little while. Thank you for inspiring us and encouraging us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showering us with your blessings. Sometimes we don't even know that we are blessed. Sometimes we have to be reminded that we are blessed. Sometimes we have to be reminded that you are even with us. And that's all right. That's what worship is for. That though we may not feel your presence in our own lives, we come together, we sit next to our neighbor, and maybe our neighbor feels your presence. And so we know that you are with us. Even if we see it vicariously through someone else, we know that you are here. And so, God, we do our best to reach deep down into that part of us where you dwell. And we open those doors, not so that you can come in, but so that you can get out. Because that's what worship is about. It's about getting out, letting it go. Help us, Lord, to use this time and this space to do more letting out, and letting go. Help us, Lord, to be more willing to shine. Help us be more willing to Feel something. Because how else are we going to share what we've experienced if we have experienced nothing? How else are we going to speak your gospel from one end of the world to the next if we have not experienced it for ourselves? So we thank you for your Holy Spirit that continues to move and to hover over us, giving us transformative power that all we have to do is accept. We thank you for loving us to the point where you listen to all of our bickering, all of our gripes. Sometimes we pray to you for some of the most petty things, and yet you listen. And sometimes we pray in languages that we don't know. We pray with the language of our hearts because we don't have the words, and yet you listen. You know what we mean. You know what we are trying to say. Because you know our hearts, you know exactly what we need, even when we cannot find the words. We thank you. We thank you for listening to our grief. We thank you for listening to our pain. 
a confusion, a suffering. Because sometimes we just want to be heard in a world that seeks to ignore us at every turn. Thank you for being the shoulder on which we cry. And right now, Lord, I, we incline you to listen to the prayers of those who need you but cannot say it for themselves. We pray for the ones who have placed their prayers on the prayer board. Your people who have decided to use their voice to speak for someone else. Listen to their prayers. Listen to our prayers. And we pray to you not because we think you're going to come down and wave it all away with your magic wand, but we pray to you because you told us whatever we ask for in your name would be granted. And so it is in the name of Jesus that we pray the way that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, having heard the word read and having heard the word proclaimed, now it is time for us to respond to that word by giving our offerings and our gifts. Lord, we can't outgive you, but we're going to try. Each and every Sunday, each and every day, we are going to try our best to outgive you because we know that what we give will be used, it will be multiplied, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. We know also that 
The more we give, the more you give to us. So we cannot have everything with a closed fist. We open our hands, we open our hearts to you because that is what it means to be in spirit and in truth. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let us, yes. And remain standing for our closing hymn. Clapping and dancing. All right. <laughs> I charge you as you go forth from this place, remember, let everything you do, everything you say, everything you think be in itself worship in spirit. That way when people see you, they'll say that person is filled with the love of God. And they might want to know where you got it from. And you just bring them right here. Amen. <laughs> May God bless you. May God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you, and grant you peace. And we all said...